Sweet. Sweet. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, look at this. Another buckle. It looks old. Sweet. Look at that. It's got the clasp bill still attached. Sweet. Another old spoon. Make sure everything's nice and cleanly out here. Nice and flat there. Old spoon. Doesn't look too old though. Be really weird if you fill this hole in. Nice and, nice and clean. Put the shrubs over it there. What the heck is that? It's got something on there, a symbol. Weird. I don't know. Weird. Oh, let's live, dang it. I'm running that CTX in relics mode, all metal, no discrimination. And not digging the iron towns. There was ice out here yesterday and the day before. Mm. Got a root. Yeah. It's easier at the beach holding the camera than it is down here. I didn't bring my pinpointer. Oh, it's coin. Oh my god! 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 I don't want to touch it, you guys. I'm trying to get uploaded right now live. Incredible find. Incredible, incredible, incredible. I knew it. I shouldn't have left the other day. I knew it. 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 Well, here's the wrap-up video. Um, got to apologize for getting so excited. Uh, metal detecting is kind of funny like that. When you find stuff in real time, um, you can get really excited. Um, sometimes you walk into a place like that and you kind of expect it. Um, almost like a deep cut at the beach. You expect to find a really outstanding gold find. Well, this place, it's kind of the same. I mean... I was standing on a spot where George Washington actually addressed people and they sold slaves and I mean this site is it's incredible it, the historical significance is massive so um, I mean what can you say but um, did pretty good um, didn't stay too long uh, made sure walked around cleaned the place up all the holes were filled in flattened out um, did get a couple of spoons um, Got, I think, a piece of a salt and pepper shaker, um, some tin foil, um, and I'll bring this up in a minute. It's funny, me as a beach hunter, um, I still walk into that place, and um, as a beach hunter, you've always built in that low tone in your mind as a gold signal. And relic hunting and 
land hunting met with a metal detector you got to kind of flip your your mentality over um, if I was to tell somebody what I know about relic hunting it would come down to probably uh, somebody who was a protege of mine and who I really respected his name was Ed Fedori and if you ever get chance I'll tell you um, he's passed away now um, but he had some of the best books you could ever read and I read a few of them the relic hunter series books um, if you ever get chance you gotta read them they're great books I mean You'd read the book and you'd feel like you were next to him when you know you'd be out detecting or even when you were reading the book you'd feel like you were next to him when he would describe stuff so um but really a you know great guy and back in the 90s you didn't have youtube i read a lot i read so many books and manuals about beaches i had some of the best guys take me under their wings had a guy down in rye and um i, I look back now and he kind of inspired me when I first started. Uh, the old man, Dawn, got me in on the beach side, but this other guy, Dave, um, he had used to hunt Parsons Field in Rye, and he had found quite a few old colonial silvers, and he, he'd tell me, he told me how he would, you know, go to the library and look up, like, some of the mint marks and, you know, some of the, like, these Spanish coins, some of where they came from uh, in, in South America, how they were minted, and... I mean, there's a lot of a story, a bunch of us more of a story to this than anything, which is cool. But um, back to the hunt. So I hit the I hit the spoons. I did get this weird object. Uh, I don't know. I don't think there's an, anything on top there, but maybe a piece of a car. Uh, got the buckle, um, and I started to slow down when I got that. It's an old buckle. And um, but what happened was I started to run into some of these. Um, nails and I did start to see some glass shards and then I it, it you know it dawned on me you know I'm sitting there thinking and I'm thinking about Ed Fedori way back in the day and he said yeah if you ever get into an area and you start finding nails and glass shards he goes it could be a block house um, it could be an old home site and to slow down and to really grid that area and you know, you take stuff like that to heart. You know, metal detecting is a lot more to, about it. You got to learn a lot. It's not as simple as like you watch a YouTube video and you pick up the detector. Um, sometimes you say, you know, should I have done this or could I have approached it that way? And by reading those books, I figure way back and I read a ton of them. I learned a lot of stuff. And, you know, that's when I really slowed down and I said, yep, I said, slow down. There'll be a coin in there. And sure as heck. You know, you got a coin probably of a lifetime if you're a, you know, you go out colonial relic hunting. Um, these Spanish cobs are pretty cool. So, um, like I say, I really, I mean, this will probably be one of my top coins going forward. I love it. So, um, 1653, I believe. I got to clean that up a little more, but Potsy Mint or Posy Mint, I don't know. Um, I have to look into that. I don't know much about these coins, but I know it's a colonial cob, Spanish cob. So, super fines, but it's kind of more to the story, you know, you, you, you read into this stuff and you never expect to find it. That's why I got so excited. I got to apologize. I dropped the camera, but, you know, you go out and you never expect to find one, but every now and then you do, you know. Uh, I, I think back to, you know, when I, when I hunted with Paul and, uh, we hit this one block house in a field and he got like, God, he must've got half a dozen coppers just in one day. And um, we went back a couple times and on that second or third trip in, I'd got two seeded coins. I'd gotten a seeded quarter and I got a seeded dime and I got a one real. And it was a later date one. Um, and I was laughing and I'm like, ah, you're toast, I've got you. And Boy, I'll tell you, he. I watched him in that field, and he popped out a, a, a clear date, 1652 pine tree coin, and the coin was clipped. So, um, real interesting, you know. I mean, you never know in these spots, but you get some really historic things. So, but thanks a lot, and thanks for tolerating me when I get so excited, and thanks for coming along on the journey, and hopefully we'll put more videos out. And uh, you all make the channel, I, you know, that's why I do the video, so... Once again, thanks a lot. Please subscribe.